Hi, it's Corrine, and I'm here today with a requested video. I have been requested this a few times, so I thought I would film this as I'm making an album. If you followed my mini album tutorial, I put up a tutorial probably close to a year ago, maybe not quite a year ago, and there were four parts to it. And the album that I made had six pages in it. And I just explained on the video that if you want to do a chunky album, just make two sets of these. So I did have a few people asking if I would actually show what I mean and how I do the spine. So I thought I would share that today. So what I did is use Laura Dennison's Stack the Deck binding system. And I will also link the videos, the one through four down in the description box below. Um, they go through the entire uh, sequence of how to make an album. So the only thing I'm adding today is how to make a chunky album. Now if you know how, which I'm sure everybody has heard of Laura Dennis and Stack the Deck, she does three different hinges. You can figure out the math and do one large hinge to double this, which I have done before, but to me it's just so much easier because I can do these in my sleep to just do two of them. So it's all up to you on how you like to do it. This is how I prefer to do it. So in my tutorial, I show you a book like this, six pages. I'm making a chunky album, so I've made two of them. So how I do this, every all the measurements are the exact same as you'll find in the tutorial. The only difference is, is that I do two of them, um, along with the spine being uh, larger of course but the front and back album cover are the exact same size so how I figure out my spine is and I do it each and every time I don't just take for granted that it's going the measurements are going to work out the same but they usually are um, pretty similar so the album covers, I believe, are seven and a half. Again, all this information is in the other video. These are seven and a half. So, of course, you want your spine to be the exa exact same height, which is seven and a half. And then what I do is I measure my spines. Now, keep in mind, you have a one fourth inch gusset between each page. So, when you're adding these two separate books in your in your album you want to leave a one fourth inch gusset between the two of them okay so I just kind of hold it up on its side and okay so you want to go ahead and measure each spine so I hold my ruler up to it and then I give it a one quarter inch gap between the two books so right about here is a quarter gap and now I just kind of estimate about another quarter. Um, so that would take me to three and a quarter. This is completely up to you on how much space you want between your front and back cover and your front and back page. So I measured mine to be about three and a quarter. That's going to give me just a little bit on either side. I don't like too big of a gap between my front cover and my first page and same with my last page and my back cover. I don't like too big of a gap. So that's going to give me about a 1 8 inch on either side. Therefore, I cut it to 3 and a quarter. Now you will com complete it the exact same way that I showed you in those previous videos. I'm going to do that right now and I will put it on fast play because I did go into to more detail on the previous tutorials, but I will finish this out on video. You will see me marking my pages. I like to mark one inch. Um, I like to mark in where my chipboard is going to be glued down. That way I have a guide to follow it, but that's completely up to you on how you want to do it. Now, like I already said, everything is the exact same measurements. However, I did these a little bit larger than I show in my previous video. I show to cut the papers to um, eight and a half by five and a half, and then for the spine, eight and a half by six. I'm using super thick cardstock. I'm using 110 pound cardstock. Therefore, I wanted a little bit larger 
piece to fold over my chipboard just to make it a little bit easier. When you're using really thick cardstock, it's hard to fold over a half inch and get a good crease on it. So I did make these a little bit larger. So that's up to you if you want to do that if you're using thicker cardstock. But again, you can follow the exact directions I showed in my previous videos on how to do this and it'll work out perfect of course except the spine so again i will place this in fast motion you will see me use this i i use this in my um tutorial it you want to put two pieces of chipboard together in between your spine and your front cover however i like a little bit bigger gap because then the pages the excuse me the front and back cover open and close a little bit better so I do two pieces of chipboard and I slip in a third very thin piece of chipboard so it just gives me a little bit more than two widths of chipboard so you'll see me use that as well if you have any questions please leave me a comment and I will respond to you and like I said I'll link the other videos in the description box that you can follow from start to finish and now you can follow from start to finish if you choose to do a chunky album. I'll put it in fast play. Thanks for watching.
so I hope you found this helpful. I just wanted to come back and show you that I did measure out a piece to go in the middle that you will actually not see. The reason I did that though is because, and this is all up to you in preference, when I leave my gap in between the two booklets, I want the white to match the rest of the book. If I did not, it would look like that, which is no big deal. It would, it would show the color through. Again, no big deal, but I wanted it to all coordinate together and this way you only see white. But you won't, by the time I'm done adhering these down, you will not see the end of these. So again, I hope this was helpful and thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let me know.